Hello, everybody. I hope you all had a wonderful Easter and welcome back to our second episode of Let's Talk About It. We are so happy to have you here. And let me just start off by saying a big thank you for all of the heartwarming comments and support that we have received from you over the last couple of days. We're thrilled to see that you liked our first episode and we definitely hope to become your go-to European show when it comes to debunking all the woke lies and the postmodern craziness. Since we in Europe have the same type of people ruling us everywhere, exposing us to similar harmful ideas and policies, it was no surprise to me to see that some people, however, were not super thrilled to see me talk about the mess that Europe is in right now. And I mean, come on, I am obviously no stranger to criticism. But I have to say, it took me a little bit by surprise to see the actual Swedish Minister of Justice and Migration lose his mind over our first episode on Twitter. I mean, does the man not have anything better to do? Like maybe solve the crime crisis or the rape epidemic here in Sweden? All jokes aside though, I can imagine that some of you might wonder why I became politically involved and why I have so rigorously criticized modern day feminism in the past. I mean, I guess everybody has their moment, right? When something clicks in their head and they realize that the world might be a little different from what they've been told. Basically, a red pill moment. Well, let me tell you about mine. When I was 13 years old, my parents took me to see a movie that changed my life in a way that I could have never imagined. The movie we saw was about the life story of Varis Deary, a Somali woman who, when she was five years old, was subjected to female genital mutilation in the worst way that you can possibly imagine. When she turned 13, she then fled her home village alone all the way through the desert in order to escape an arranged marriage to a 60-year-old man. Her story made a really profound impression on me. I remember thinking to myself, I am just 13 years old, like her, but I'm not being married out to any 60-year-old man. Nobody mutilated me when I was five, so why does this happen to her? Why does it happen to them, but not to me here in the Netherlands? Asking all these questions at such a young age, I think made me incredibly aware of these immense cultural and religious differences between Europe and Africa and Europe and the Middle East, and especially on how these differences impact the lives of young women and girls. So from that moment onwards, I decided that I wanted to do something for these girls. I wanted to fight for their rights. So basically, at the age of 13, I became what I thought was a feminist. It made me want to learn how to debate. It made me want to go into law school. And it especially made me wanted to go into politics. I wanted to fight for the rights of young women and girls all around the world. And I decided that I was not going to take my freedom or my safety for granted. So this movie ma basically made me have my red pill moment at the age of 13. But now that I'm 10 years older, I haven't gotten any less worried, to say the least. A lot of things that I was afraid of and that I was warned for through the story of women like Ayan Hirsi Ali and Waris Diri actually became reality in Europe over the past 10 years. Many cities have become rapidly unsafe. Female genital mutilation, gang rapes and honor killings. Those things don't just happen in the desert anymore. They happen next door. And if you ask me, I don't think anybody can be surprised by that in good faith. Over the past decade, Europe has imported millions of young men that do not treat or value women the same way that we do here in the West. And women from those cultures aren't the only victims. I saw the effects of it with my own eyes as well. The town I grew up in started to change, frequent knife attacks started to happen, and young girls were being sexually harassed and aggressed by migrant men. So I started asking questions about it. But sooner rather than later, I found out that these so-called feminists and leftists that are constantly advocating tolerance and equality didn't actually want to talk about these subjects. I was called a racist, and believe it or not, even an anti-feminist for speaking out about these issues. Because according to these feminists, it's not my place as a Western woman 
to speak about Islamic culture. And this is where my major disappointment with feminists began. Basically, just like woke liberals, feminists of today are neo-Marxists. They divide the world in two segments, the oppressor and the oppressed. And the oppressor is always the same. It's the white heterosexual male. So everybody who's not a white man is immediately oppressed and should therefore receive special treatment. That's why every time that feminists talk about women's quotas, for example, they are not talking about people that are picking up the trash. They're talking about high status, highly paid jobs. But then again, I mean, we all know hypocrisy seems to be a returning theme for them. Western feminists say they fight for women's rights, yet they were silent during the riot attacks on that terrible New Year's Eve in Cologne. They were silent when thousands of young girls were raped in Rotherham. And they are continuously being silent about the brave women in Iran who are actually fighting for their basic human rights. In fact, all these Western government officials who go there to Iran, who say that they are constantly fighting the patriarchy here in the West, bow their heads in submission and cover their hair with veils when the Ayatollah asks them to do so. So is this really about equality? Of course it's not. It's about status and it's about power. Because who cares about modern men and their problems? And who cares about the working class and the struggles they might have? No, no. It's more important for feminists to get another chair at a large corporate board. And for all you guys, especially women actually, that are sitting on the sidelines here, let me tell you one thing. Nobody is safe from the mob rule of feminism. Because white women, we're up next. Don't believe me? The official signal, signal came this week from the Swedish government. Listen to this. Att ska utlandsfödda kvinnor få makt, ja, då kommer eh, vita eh, inrikesfödda kvinnor att också behöva flytta på sig. Funny, right? That this minister of equality, yes I know, apparently Sweden has a minister of equality, has made a public statement like that and is at the same time still in her office getting paid a 50,000 euro paycheck every month. So she's keeping her power and privilege, but you and I, us regular people, we will have to step down from our positions just because of the color of our skin. Let me just ask you one more time. How is that for equality? So which way, Western woman? Do you want to become part of this dystopian, genderless world that the feminist elites have cut out for you? Or do you want to live as a free woman next to free men? I know which way I will pick. So that was another episode of Let's Talk About It. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great night. But before you go, please click this button here, you know, the subscribe one. We would really appreciate it. Might be there, might be here. I don't know. Just click the button, please.